This problem reads, a beam of sunlight encounters a plate of crown glass at a 45.00 degree angle of incidence using the data in the table of the indices of refraction of crown glass at various wavelengths. Find the angle between the violet ray and the red ray in the glass. So the index of refraction slightly depends on the wavelength and of course that's why we get dispersion of white light into its colors and when we look at the table it looks like red has 1.520 while violet has 1.538 so the difference shows up slightly in the second decimal and as far as manufacturing high-end optical instruments such as fancy ca cameras or microscopes it's important to pay attention to this kind of chromatic aberration that's caused by dispersion and to try to get rid of it it may look pretty you get a nice yeah dispersion rainbow colors here when they when it shines through a um, yeah, through a piece of glass, but you don't want to get that at all times and your photos look like that. Or you're using eyeglasses and you have little colored fringes on the side. You want to get a sharp image and not this this one here, but it's sometimes it's unavoidable, such as in the case of somebody wearing thick eyeglasses. But then again, fortunately, the angle here is pretty small. I put this one here at 45 degrees and we can see here as they're splitting up, here would be the violet on one side and the other side would be the red. It's really tiny angle. I have the protractor here. Um, I can't even measure that tiny angle here, so we're going to calculate it in this problem. Okay, of course that means for these two different um, wavelengths we have to make two calculations one for the red so that would be Snell's law that the angle of refraction for the red would be the inverse sine of the index of refraction of air times the sine of the incident angle divided by the index of refraction of the red of crown glass, so the 1.520. And then for the violet or purple, it's going to look the same. And then I just prepared this here so I don't have to write it all over again. And then, because I may need more space, I might as well pull it over here. So, yeah, purple. So I'm going to come up here with some kind of angle, and then on the other one, I'm going to come up with this one here for some kind of angle. And then we would subtract them. come up with the result which should be quite small the difference between the two so what I would get here on the calculator is the inverse sine of 1.00 times the sine of 45 degrees divide by the index of refraction for red in 
Chrome glass. And then do the same thing for violet. There we go, and then subtract the two, and that kind of looks like going to come out to 0 0.35 degrees when you subtract these two. That's also why they gave us four significant figures earlier, so that we can drag this out here to two decimals when we're done with it, and we can see here that actually the index of refraction are um, are different in these last two decimals for the numbers given, so it makes sense to give it two significant figures when we're done. 0 0.35 degrees is the difference. So finally, we're getting away from the index of refraction and getting into the thin lens equation. And by the way, this is going to be my third take for this recording here. I wasn't satisfied with the first two. You already see that I have some stuff prepared down here that I'm going to use in a moment. And the problem reads, an object is located 9.0 centimeters in front of a converging lens of focal length 6.0 centimeters using an accurately ray accurately drawn ray diagram determine where the image is located. Now here the thin lens equation would apply. Notice that I using I'm using a thick lens here. That's kind of the only image that I got from this software here, but it'll serve a couple of purpose purposes. For one thing, I want to point out that it is called the thin lens equation or Gauss thin lens equation, even though any kind of lens has a certain thickness to it. But here's the thing. If we were to use a thick lens equation, then this is the kind of algebra we have to go through. If we instead make an approximation for a considering a lens to be thin enough, then this is the equation. And notice that's a whole lot easier. 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance equals 1 over focal length. Of course, here on this particular website, they're using different symbols for the object and image distances, but the equation is exactly the same. So overall, we're going to use the thin lens equation, even though we're dealing with thick lenses. Uh, more or less thick, even this one has a certain thickness to it, but really the reason is because we want to avoid all this algebra here and make the approximation for a thin lens equation that in many, many cases works just perfectly fine. I want to point out a couple of things. This is actually from the book that I'm using. Somebody put this on a PowerPoint online. In any case, it says object distance for lenses, DO is positive if the object is to the left of the lens, a real object. The image distance for lenses is for a real image formed to the right of the lens and for a virtual image formed to the left of the lens. Keep that in mind here, these three things. And of course, for the focal length is positive for a converging convex lens. All right, so let's get started on the problem. So here's this thick lens. I think I already said that it's going to serve me some purposes though. And it has a focal length of 6 centimeters here and 6 centimeters here, and the image is at 9 centimeters. I'm going to use the ears of the zebra at 9 centimeters just off the page here, but that's because I need the space on the other side as well. Okay, let me remove this one here. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 centimeters right here. Okay, when we get the image on the other side, it's going to be somewhere over here. And of course, I've, I've taught this class many times. I know that the image is going to be upside down, but we'll figure it out from the analysis as well that it will be. So in any case, we get the image on the other side. 
and of course from the object lots and lots of light rays myriads of light rays are going in all directions and when we need to draw a ray diagram we just cannot draw all of them so we have to make life easier for us there are mainly a couple three things that are being done one is put the bottom of the object on the optical axis because then the bottom of the object right here will be focused to an image point also on the optical axis so for example let me actually move this on the way here for just a moment and so I might have the bottom of the object here then choose the top of the object such as the ears and that will you will get an image point for that as I said it should be upside down and now having the top of the image and the bottom of the image you can fill everything in there and I'm not very good at drawing so I might get something like this one here respectively of course I already have it in here so I could fill anything in here if I have the bottom of the object and the top of the object whoops the other one and yeah so that's that's an advantage I can reduce it just to this point here on the optical axis and this point here and just pay attention to those light rays and fill in anything everything else in between okay but even from the top of the object we have lots and lots of light rays emerging but of course we're only interested in the ones that hit the lens and pass through the lens but even so we have too many of them to be analyzed so we're paying attention only to a few of them and we call them the print we call these the principal rays because they will make life really easy all right so I move this out of the way here so here is my object and there is a ray that is parallel to the optical axis and it goes to the middle of the lens and there it's being refracted there you go and goes through the focal point now at this point you should cry foul of what I'm doing here because it looks like the light ray is bent in the middle of the lens and there's absolutely no reason why it should do that correct is that the light ray is being bent on the first surface and then goes straight through the lens and then bent on the second surface now the way I draw this drew this here is the same way that you will find it in most if not all physics textbooks especially the introductory physics textbooks and you find it in the applets that I'm using in this class and the only reason is that it's easy to draw so draw straight across here up parallel to the optical axis and then it goes to the focal point but it's not proper proper is to say that this one here is being refracted on the optical I'm sorry on the surface of the lens and this one here is refracted on the surface of the lens and then in between the light ray is straight and unbent the problem with this here is if I wanted to draw this I would have to go in here and make myself a tangent line and an optical axis or normal on here and use Snell's law in order to refract it here and then it hits over here and I have to do the same thing tangent line and normal optical axis and use again Snell's law and then the light ray will go to the focal point so that would be quite a bit of work and that's why I said really the only advantage is to of, of drawing it to the middle and then through the focal points because it's a whole lot easier the outcome is really essentially the same I'm gonna get essentially the same light ray on the other side and as you can see when I do it the proper way here it looks good uh, so when I teach uh, um, I do go to the middle here and then I erase what's in between and then I connect it inside the lens okay the next convenient light ray the uh, the principal ray is the one that goes first through the f focal point um, yeah first through the focal point and then becomes parallel to the optical axis so right there 
and we already can see that these cross here in the image point. And of course I do the same thing as I did before. They actually are refracted on the surfaces. There you go, and then I fill this one in. That's actually how it looks proper. Again, the reason for doing it with the middle of the lens is just for to make it really convenient when drawing. And the third principal ray is the one that goes straight through the middle. And it kind of looks like the middle and yeah, and then the three actually come together in the same image point over here. The one going through the middle is slightly refracted and then on the other surface also slightly refracted. In fact it's so little I can't even redraw that I would still come out with the same thing. Again Snell's law applying it to each time it the light ray is refracted on a surface would yield virtually as exactly the same thing. Okay so here I have the image point of the ears and then I also have the image point of the feet somewhere over here. At least I try. There we go. And then I can see that the ears are down here so my image needs to be upside down. And so I'm going to move that in there. Let's see. There we go. So slightly magnified. And then when I look at this one here, how, many, how much I got here, well I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, pretty much 18 centimeters for the image distance. And if I calculate that using the thin lens equation, here it is, then I would solve for the image distance. I have to grab the calculator. So it said that I have a let's see oh, I, that I have um, a focal length of six centimeters, so one over six, and then the object distance is given, so I get it to the other side in order to single out the image distance. So I subtract one over the image distance. And then because this one here being a reciprocal inverse, I will invert that again to get the image distance. And true enough, it's 18 centimeters and my drawing is quite accurate. That's what I had mentioned at the beginning of me taping this here for a third time is because on the last drawings I just wasn't as accurate as I was this time around. And then I'm going to check here with the applet from Fed. And first of all I'm going to make the lens a whole lot bigger so the principal rays are passing through it. And then I want to use a ruler in order to determine what the focal length is. So there we go. And now I need to change either the curvature or the refractive index in order to give me focal length of 6 centimeters and notice they use 20, 40, 60, 80 so that's the equivalent to my 6 centimeters. Just keep in mind that I, they don't offer me another ruler here. So their 10s are my 1s. Then I'm going to put this at exactly 9 centimeters from the middle of the lens to the middle of the object. So there it is. And I do the same thing here in the Apple. Or the Apple is doing the same thing. The bottom of the pencil is on the optical axis, so the bottom of the pencil is on the optical axis, and then I just use one point, kind of where the graphite is, and then ends up at one point. And then the one parallel to the optical axis goes to the focal point. The one here goes to the middle, and this one here is yeah, kind of fake. It doesn't even hit the lens. I guess if I used marginal rays, then I could do that. But yeah, so if we imagine that this lens is much larger, I cannot make it any larger or mix it out. And then over here is the image point, and then I could fill in 
everything in between. In any case, my image distance here is measured to be, well, looks kind of like a 19 centimeters rather than the 18 centimeters I had on the other one, but that's pretty close enough. Notice that they do the same thing over here as well, that they go to the middle of the lens and that's where it refracts, and I explained that earlier, that that one is only done in order to be able to draw the light rays relatively easily rather than doing a complicated analysis with Snell's law on the surfaces. This is also a third take on this particular problem because I wasn't satisfied with the first two. It's not easy to draw accurate ray diagrams, especially here with a software where I have kind of limited space on a actual whiteboard or chalkboard. I could use more space and even then it's not easy. In any case, this particular problem says an object is located 30.0 centimeters to the left of a converging lens whose focal length is 50.0 centimeters. Draw a ray diagram to scale and from it determine the image distance and the magnification. Use the thin lens and magnifi magnification equations to verify your answers to what I found out from the ray diagram. Okay, so here is the more or less thin or thick lens for which I'll be using the thin lens equation. The focal length is over here, 50 centimeters. Here's the ruler. Oops, I didn't mean to turn that. But actually, if you turn that, what I think about this cooler is really cool. About this ruler is really cool. Notice what happens to the numbers. They actually turn with it, so they're always right side up. In any case, that's just playing around. So here's the ruler. I know it says 50 centimeters. Here's just the other way around that um, I don't get an, a ruler that gives me like 50, 40, 30 and so on, so my 5 here is actually 50 centimeters and there's the focal point and there's the other focal point. The image distance here is 30 centimeters. I put, I think this is like the end of a leg of this beetle here on the optical axis, so the leg will also end up on the optical axis and I'm going to take the tail here, the head is over here, you can kind of see the antenna there, and so I put I put the tail here as being my object point that I'm going to image and then I could fill in anything in between. Okay, I'm going to move this other way for now. I have already prepared a certain number of lines. I just have to find them. So here from the tail is the one that goes parallel to the optical axis and then it's being re fracted and of course again it's not the middle of the lens. Let's see I try to adjust this here just right. There we go. And then again of course it refracts on the surface. So that's where this little one comes in. So I erase that part and then put it here. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to take the one, the principal ray that goes through the middle of the lens, and I notice that these two already diverge here, and besides, the beetle is inside the focal length, and where is this other principal ray ending up? What happens here is as these diverge on the other side of the lens, we are not going to get an image here, we're not going to get a real image. Instead, the lens actually has become a magnifying glass, and we know that in a magnifying glass, if the object is here, the image is on the same side, and it's going to be virtual. So that's where I have to draw it. Well, the way these ray, ray diagrams work is that obviously they don't come together here, these two rays, but if I follow them to the left, you kind of can see that they converge on the left. So here they are. Here is one of them. So I extend this refracted one all the way through here, the straight line. And I do the same thing with the other one, with the one that goes to the middle. And there we 
go and make it a little longer, I guess. And you can see that it is not easy and I have to pay close attention to what happens there. And then here where exactly is the image point. It's a little tough to see. Okay, now here is actually where the third one comes in. So I'm gonna grab this one here and go from the original object point here that goes to the right horizontal and then goes to the focal point on the other side and then this one here that goes to the middle and this one here goes first to the focal point and I put it there because it's it's really not um, it's really not a light ray that's there but we could imagine that it's there and then it would become horizontal and now I'm gonna take this one here and I extend it to the left and that will give me the other principal ray and it looks like it's converging in the same point now that looks like I just performed magic here but the only reason I did that is to confirm that the first two arrays are there and that's just helping in the drawing alright so here's then the image over here and again I'm gonna uh, it's probably gonna move uh, let's see I'm gonna push this over here is the leg on the optical axis and then I guess I have to make it a little smaller there we go there we go okay and then I kind of can see what my image distance is this is 30 centimeters 40 50 60 70 about 75 centimeters and the magnification this is almost one square here and this one looks like two and a half squares and this is the entire image so magnification looks about 2.5 which if it is correct is the same as the ratio of the image and object distance 75 over 30 is also 2.5 okay in any case this one is a virtual image and when we look through a magnifying glass we can see the object and the image looks bigger after all it's a magnifying glass but because it's bigger it kind of seems to appear actually behind the object and behind the object we cannot put a screen and project it there because the object is in between so that those are some reasons why this one is called a virtual image now we can argue that well if it's a virtual image it really shouldn't be there but the thing is of course we're looking at it with our eye and yeah sorry I didn't mean to put the blood vessels here but again that's that's an image that I got got from the eye we're looking through the lens at the object see the image and we actually do get a real image on our own retina now how does a virtual image become a real image if this lens here where we're inside the focal length of this lens here only produce a virtual image well in this kind of optical system this one here is not the only lens but of course we have our own eye lens as well so it takes this virtual image and projects it onto our retina as a real image okay and then we can calculate here Oops, yeah, kind of running out of space here. Ah, that's good enough. And when we calculate, we come up with one over the focal length, which is given as 50 centimeters. And then because I get this to the other side, I come up with um, one divided by um, I object 30. And then, because this one is singled out now, solved for, I need to invert that result, and I come up with negative 75 centimeters, and that negative 5 centimeters. So this one here is an image that's on negative 75 centimeters from when you look at the sign conventions. Then if the virtual image is formed on the left, it comes up with a negative distance. Okay, then I use the magnification equation and I come up with that a negative, negative 75, so the two negatives um, cancel each other, so negative 
negative 75 divided by 30 is going to be a positive 2.5 and that's kind of our estimate from earlier on as well and the positive 2.5 for the magnification simply means that it's a right side up image okay using the applet I have to adjust this one here to 50 centimeters so for example with the next of refraction there we go and I'm gonna put this one here at 30 centimeters and we can also see that these rays on the right hand side are diverging so I'm not gonna get any image a, any real image so I'm gonna put a virtual image there and here it is magnified right side up and the image distance is yep pretty much 75 centimeters